Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial in this Haskell programming series. So in this tutorial, we're going to be diving deeper into um, sort of how to think about constructing Haskell programs. And we're also going to learn about folds because I think it's really intertwined. Um, so if you remember back to, I think it was the second tutorial, um, I said that a program was simply something that mapped inputs to outputs. And it was built of functions composed together because of course, functions map inputs to outputs, so joining them together is going to produce a program. And um, the question now is, what are these functions meant to do, kind of in the Haskell mindset of things? And I think the best way is the best way to explain this is through folds. I use folds all the time. I see that other people don't use folds all the time, and I think they're really they're really missing a massive amount of beauty. Um, but anyway, there's a function fold r. There's also fold l. That's for right fold and left fold. We're going to mostly deal with fold r today. So first, first of all, what is fold r? So there's some type class foldable, which we're going to completely ignore, and we won't cover that. I've, I have no idea. Well, I kind of know what it is, but anyway. Um, list is uh, has an instance of type foldable. So just think of this ta as list a. Anyway, it takes in this uh, function a to b to b, it takes in something of type b. Um, it takes a list of a's and it's going to output a b. Now, it's not clear what that does yet until we look at the types of the constructors of a list. So let's colon t the cons constructor. And you see that's a to list a to list a. And that makes sense. It takes something of type A and joins it to a list. So it's going to take in the list, the thing, and the new list. It's going to be the output. And now let's look at the empty list type. It's just a function with no input. It just is of type list A. Now, let's call list A B for now. This would be A to B to B. Hey. Yeah, familiar. And this list A is going to be now that's that's what a fold is. A fold essentially replaces constructors. So let me give you an example. So one way of constructing lists is like this. See, a joined to uh, sorry one joined to two joined to three joined to the empty list is the list one two three. Now what if we thought about replacing these constructors? So let's replace cons with plus and empty with zero. I now have the sum function. Let's replace um, empty with one and cons with times. I now have the factorial function. Um, how weird. I didn't, I didn't realize that fact, uh, three factorial and anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, or at least the, the multiplying function. I realize that's not factorial. It would be though, if I, it uh, doesn't matter. And we can do exactly the same with fold. If I do this, one to 10, it's gonna add those, you know, it's gonna sum that list. Um, if I change that to times and one, um, yeah, one to six, that finds uh, six factorial or, you know, three factorial like that. Um, interesting, interesting. So, right then. So we see that fold R replaces the constructors of something else. So let's, let's go and let's define fold R. So we're gonna make a function fold um, and it's going to be a to b to b, so that's what we're replacing cons with. To b, that's what we're replacing empty with. It's going to take in list a and it's going to output a b. So it's it's pretty easy to define. So first of all, the first input I'm going to call cons because that's what we're replacing cons with. The next is empty because that's what we're replacing the empty list with. And now for some pattern matching fun. So if the input is empty, 
output empty. You see, we're just replacing, substituting um, empty with empty. Fold and now cons empty and now x cons x's. So we're going to go x cons. See, I'm making it infix to make it really explicit that we're just doing um, substitution. x cons. Now, it has to be of type b in cons. So we need to recursively call fold cons empty on the rest of the list. Fantastic. That's it. Um, so we can use our function fold now. So if I plus 0, 1 to 10, exactly the same. Perfect. Now we can define fold on other types as well. Um, so let's make a type. Let's make a type for, I don't know, sets. So this is good practice for sort of defining Haskell functions. So what is a set? A set is either the empty set or it's a singleton of type A or it's a union of two sets. Now I'm going to go deriving show to make my life easier. Oh, I can really turn this into a revision class through folds. So first of all, fold set. Let's define this function fold set. So it's going to take in something to replace empty, something to replace singleton A, so that's going to be A to B, and something to replace union set A set A. So that's going to be of type B to B to B. Then it's going to take in something of type set A and return something of type B. Lovely. So fold set, empty, singleton, union. Really lazy with my function names. And then empty. And that's going to equal E. Fold set, ESU. And now it's going to be sing X. So that's our singleton. And that's going to be. Um, Yes, sorry, S of X. And then fold set ESU of union um, X and Y. So those are our two input sets. Let's just fix this indentation. That's going to be, um, first of all, fold set ESU x union i don't know why i did it in fix because it's not in fix in the doesn't matter um you know what i'm doing fold set esu why so if all goes to plan no of course union is meant to be you my bad my bad because we're replacing union with you normally i actually write them out in full right Great. So, um, what can we do with fold sets? What's useful to do with fold set? Well, let's maybe define, first of all, set inclusion. So, is in, and that's going to be of type A to set A to bool. So, how this is going to work is I could say A is in S, and that'll be true if A is in the set S. Um, cool. So let's think about this. So I'm going to try and draw a set in ASCII. This can only go badly. So U for union. Um, so say we have something like this. Maybe this is our set um, empty. So this could be the set one, two. Um, and you see kind of, it's like a tree because it is a binary tree in its implementation. 
Um, and we need to think about what we could replace union, singleton, and empty with to work out whether something is in, um, whether, uh, yeah, say let's check to see if three is in this set. So what are we going to replace empty with? Well, is three in the empty set? No. False. Um, singleton, we replace with equals equals three. So that's, that's what we're going to replace that with. Um, and then we replace union with or. Oh, no, that looks so confusing. Um, v then for sort of the logical notation of or. And, and you can see that these two are going to be false. This is going to be false. All them together, the whole thing's going to be false because three is not in that set. But if I made it two instead, that and that will be false, but that will be true. So the ors will ripple up and it will become true. So I'm going to define here test set. Um, I'll define that very set just to make life easier. So sing one union sing two and empty that will just be used for test purposes so is in has the most amazing definition so fold set we replace empty with false we replace singleton with equals equals x and we replace um, union with logical or Oh, no instance of eek, ah. So my bad, I forgot because we're using equals equals, we have to add the equality, the equality constraint on A, much better. So now I can go, you know, two is in test set, true. Three is not in test set. And that's amazing. I've defined in one line of code, and it is a short line. I've defined um, sort of the in operator in set theory. Quite incredible. And I, I've done it in a very Haskelly way. I'm not thinking about how I find. Um, I'm not thinking about how I find um, whether two is in that set. I'm not. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about how I can manipulate the data types. I'm thinking on another level, a higher level. It's um, it's really nice. Um, so next, how about subset? So is um, so subst. So that's going to be of type, and we'll remember the equality thing here. Set a to set a to bool. So this will be true if the first set is a subset of the second set. So how are we going to define this? I need to think about this one. Um, OK, yes. So that's our first set as input. So we're going to go fold set again. Now, the empty set is always the subset. So that's true. Now. For this one, we're going to replace that with is in s. So we're going through. Um, hold on. No, we're not. Is in s2. <laughs> um, no, which one are we folding over? We're folding over the second one. No, we'll fold over the first one. Talking to myself, I shouldn't. Um, so we're folding over the first set, and for every single thing, we're seeing if it's in the second set using the is in function we defined up here. And this time, every element has to be in the other set for it to be true. And then we are folding over S1. So let's make, I don't know why I got rid of test set. Let's make test set one. It's going to be the union of sing one, sing two, and test set two. It's going to be the union of sing one, uh, union 
sing to um, and union sing, oh no, not union, just sing three. So um, test set one, um, subst, oh, test set two, that should be true. But if I swap them around, it should be false. And I don't know, just to show empty is <coughs> always a subset. So that's quite incredible. Um, I now can, just as revision, define the equals type class um, for sets. So eek a, um, eek set a. So I need to put set a in brackets um, because of this parameter here. Where s equals um, r equals s subst r and r subst s. It's just simple double inclusion. So now I can go test set one equals test set one, of course that's true, that's false. Um, I can define test set one in a different way. I could say it's union of empty sing, uh, nope, and then, you know, or a better way is union empty test set one. So that's the same set. I'm unioning that set with empty and it is true. So it doesn't matter that the sort of the, the memory layout of the two are different. We've managed to find a proper way of check, doing set equality using folds. So final thing to cover is what um, fold L is. Um, fold L is a bit weird. Um, I'll, I'll give you the definition of fold L. Um, fold L is of type prime because a to b to, no, b to a to b to uh, b to list oh, a to b. So this is a flipped parameter. We flipped the inputs of this one. Um, fold l prime. Um, so cons empty, this line is the same, fold L cons empty, oh, empty, oh, uh, yep, um, x cons x's. So this, this is where it differs. This equals fold L of, um, of course that stays the same, cons, this changes, cons x empty, and then x's. So unlike the last one, this is tail recursive. Um, and it's the same as Flipping, it's the same as voldar, sort of functionally. If you were to f reverse the list as input and flip the um, binary operator. But it's tail recursive, so it, it does things a bit differently. It can also be useful. But you can also define fold L on many things. Uh, I just thought I should cover that for completeness. Great. Well, that's, that's folds. Um, I think that's all I'll cover in this tutorial. Um, so next week I'm going to do another one type classes, um, but I'm going to talk about specifically the functor type class, applicative, monad, and monoid type classes, and we can finally do some I/O and define a main function, compile some code, and escape the confines of the REPL. Um, so that's quite exciting, and I think 
what I'll probably do after that is maybe um, maybe some UI building. It's not often that you get sort of very practical Haskell tutorials that will tell you how to make a UI in Haskell. So I think I'll do that. I'll do a GUI, the tutorial after. Um, and then we can move back to the theory. I've ticked the practical box. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks for listening and see you next time.